In a previous video, we introduced the framework called SCAN, which is a very simple way to make sense, help us make sense of complexity. It's just two axes relative to a given now, how much time we have before and after, and also the extent to which it's certain or uncertain, predictable or unpredictable, same or unique. And we've in that previous videos or in previous videos, we've talked about a real boundary, which we might call the inverse Einstein boundary about if we do the same thing we'll get the same result if we do different things we will get we can get the same result if we do the same things we can get the same result if we do the same things we may get different results or we may need to do different things to get the same effective result and in the other axis what we have is a transition point between decision between the time to make sense versus the time we've got to decide between time to think and no time to think. So we can give these, although we've used labels before of calculated or complicated, simple or rule based, ambiguous or pattern based, and not known, nothing's the same, we have no time to think about it, and it's inherently uncertain. We can give these labels or descriptors, kind of roles if you like. So on the one side, this one, we have to do things on belief, we don't have time for anything else. So this is the believer, it's a role. It's not a person, it's a role. Here we can talk about the scientist, someone who is calculating what's going on but probably doesn't reach the real world very much. It's not dealing with real time. On the other side, dealing with uncertainty, we've got the technologist, the engineer. The phrase, it depends, comes to mind. Whereas down here, we have the artist. And there's a nice analogy here where we can describe reality as being like a swamp. The artist runs like heck. The catch is that you can't really come back. You get lots of experiences, but you can't really come back. You can't describe how you got there. The believer stays in exactly one place and follows the rules. These are the answers that are previously set. We will do what we know. That gets us results fast, but it can't deal with variation or variance. On another, what we have is the scientists who've been very clever. They've woven a platform. They've woven a, a platform between these individual belief to build a whole structure. And finally we have the technologist who can, it's like spreading their weight on sw swamp shoes, they can travel around and rest for a while so that they don't sink. So the driver here is effectively truth versus value. And between each of these there are edges. So this one we might describe as the edge of innovation. An artist comes up with an idea and ba it bounces backwards and forwards between experiment, new idea, experiment, new idea. But we're always dealing with the uncertain. We can't really produce things very much. So that's the edge of innovation. This one is the edge of uncertainty. Well, again, we bounce backwards and forwards. The job of those two is to reduce uncertainty, is to identify what has to remain complex and will always remain uncertain, to, versus things that extract out of it the things that can be made more certain. So that's an edge of uncertainty. Here, we have more bouncing backwards and forth, back and forth, across the edge of action. And here is what we might call the edge of panic, where the believer gets launched into the not known. Now there's an interesting thing that happens here, because if we look at how this works in real life, we have, if you look at how science develops, we have idea, the new idea arises in the not known. The only place where new ideas can arrive and can arise is from the not known. From there we build a hypothesis. 
We then test that, refine that, to build a theory. And from there we derive what we think of as scientific law, or some kind of law. So there's a very strong loop, or strong, strong link, that goes from there to there. The flow is in this direction. But there's a catch. If we think of it as a development loop, it should go back to new ideas again. But instead, what we often have is what we might describe as the heresy barrier. The fear of difference, the fear of change, and we build a solid wall against any, ever seeing anything new. This is the heresy barrier. And in every organisation, every context, wherever there's a rule that is being followed and is treated as the truth, we will have problems with a heresy barrier. So one of our tasks in making sense of complexity and uncertainty in dealing with all of these transitions is to face that barrier. Otherwise we will never be able to get any innovation working at all. So there's a nice way of describing ways of looking at and the kinds of thinking, the modes of thinking that we need, how we transition between them, but also to be aware of getting stuck in any one of these positions and particularly that one of the her heresy barrier. So SCAN's really useful for helping us make sense of these kind of transitions, the, the changes in modes of thinking that we need to make something happen. It's a very useful tool for this kind of purpose. Thanks for watching. Do look at the YouTube description for links to further detail. And don't forget to subscribe for other videos and also to support us on Patreon to help us produce these videos and the tools themselves.